All right, and I'll call this meeting in order. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the agenda for the November 20th, 2018 regular meeting of Council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White, resolved that the minutes of the November 6, 2018 regular meeting of Council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? All right, so we'll just pop right ahead to uh, our uh, correspondence, and we have a letter there from Mr. Wharton uh, congratulating everybody, obviously, on uh, being elected to council. I'm sure that he's looking forward to seeing us at the AMM. New business, uh, here we have 6.1, Parkland Public Works Association, request for support. Uh, I guess we can get uh, Mr. Poole to expand on that. <coughs> yeah, we uh, we held the inaugural meeting ooh, two weeks ago in, in Grand View. It's been kind of spearheaded by the CAO of, of uh, the RM of Gilbert Plains Grand View. But what what he's looking for is is basically a network where we're forming superintendents and uh, even CAOs if they have to, just to just to have a, a good link within the parkland for, for something like say an asphalt tender. How do you do yours? Is there any chance that we can come together on it and, and, and have one big tender? Uh, Minnetonas sent a representative. Swan Valley West was to send one, but they couldn't make it that day. But if we get our, if our, if our neighbors become involved, I think this can be, I think this can be pretty advantageous. It's not as uh, involved yet or anything uh, uh, as detailed as the, the Manitoba Water and Wastewater uh, Association that I'm a part of, that I'm on the board, but uh, this is just like the inaugural phase to see if we can get it going and get that networking started and just have all the municipalities, I think there's 18 we're looking forward to be a part of, just to see where it goes and see what uh, benefits we can get out of it. I think it's well worth it. Uh, Council Morgan. Um, Mr. Poole, it sounds like it's a good idea, but just for clarification, this is more like an association for information sharing between municipalities, not a collective group of people trying to get together to form, uh, not not say like a union, but a, a bargaining unit as an association of public works? That's right. It, there, there won't be any employees or bargaining units or or anything like that it's it's strictly networking from the different municipalities just being rep represented you know, by the association or on the association thank you okay then i'll read the resolution moved by councillor freeze and seconded by councillor morio resolved that the town of swanover endorsed the public um, oh sorry councillor gray just two things is there um, other than what's here is there any term of reference there is there's a there's a draft uh, constitution and it's it's only in draft form uh, we, we like again we we don't know where we want this to go we don't we know we don't want it to be very big it's it's intended for for fast communication between foremen superintendents basically managers of uh, public works in different municipalities so that they can share information and uh, gain efficiencies in municipalities. So that's what the Constitution will be geared uh, toward. My second question is, is there any um, cost other than the time and travel anticipated? No, as of right now, there will be no membership for a membership fee. As of right now, they, they've obviously have looked at it, but right now they, they want to see what type of uh, following this can, this can get to see who's interested and if there was they were thinking it would be around the fifty dollars so they're not looking for a lot of monetary contributions this is strictly for uh, the networking and that that money would go towards if if we can I don't know, be over lunch it pays for lunch. <clears throat> Councilor White, I appreciate the idea of group purchasing specifically at the list that you have. Of, uh, 
Sterling is going to be buying a bunch of asphalt for Gilbert, that we need some, and, and you find that out about that through this network, theoretically we could buy collaboratively. Yeah. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Morio, resolved that the town of Swan River endorsed Parkland Public Works Association. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? I don't know if you have the answers because I see the meeting is coming up in the future relative to the hypothetical case where non-town people rode on the uh, air airport cleaning the runway without the town's knowledge or permission. <coughs> is anything happening there that you know of? You may not know yet. I don't know yet. We're going over exactly why it happened on Thursday. So every, all the communication from the town to the pilots, to the pilots, to the hospital, to the hospital, to the doctors will be discussed and we want to figure out why this happened and, and then how it happened and then make sure that it doesn't happen again. Okay, thank you. Okay, moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Resolved that the Superintendent of Works report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, I was in favor. I just moved kind of slowly. I, I, I see you. <laughs> okay, so uh, next is the management meetings. Uh, we have a chance to look at that. I read. Uh, I'm sure it's something simple. I see Terry is moving boxes to the basement for preparation to move to the new office. What's that about? Uh, Terry, our CFO, is, is moving his office. So he's moving offices. And where is he going and why? He's going out to the work area <coughs> to, so that he can be in the work area amongst the managers, amongst the clerks, and this office over on the side of the building would it will basically be what it was intended to be, which is the mayor's office and a council touchdown room for, for research, telephone, yeah. internet. Yeah, it's all shared by all members of council as a touchdown room if, yeah. if they need it. Thank you. Is he okay? Well, by he Councilor okay. Fraser, second by Councilor Morial, result that the management meeting, uh, management committee minutes be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. Okay, we'll move on to council member reports. Don't we have to deal with the 8.3? We did do with the admin report. I don't know if it's critical that we do it, but don't we have to do with the. I, I assume you're going to do this one over. Centennial Arena Assessment Recommendation Report. I don't know what I think we should do with it, but it's on the agenda, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. For heaven's sakes, let's jump to some other damn meeting. Okay, it's all good. It's good. Uh, it's all good. Okay. Um, we'll definitely get to those two, but uh, okay. So, council member and uh, CEO reports. We'll start with uh, Councillor Friesen. <coughs> Sorry. Quiet. You're quiet. I have a question for John. Uh, oh, sorry, Councillor and John. Um, the tree lighting at the chamber office. What's the beef? Uh, this Friday the 23rd at 6.30 is the tree, tree lighting uh, at the chamber office. Hot dogs, hot chocolate, uh, pictures with Santa, and bonfire. In conjunction with Black Friday, correct? In conjunction with Black Friday, that's correct. Thank you. Well, Council Moore. Um, basically, it's been a whirlwind two weeks for the uh, 
personnel committee and stuff like that, but I'll let the chairman of that committee give the full reports on it there. But uh, the main topics that we were dealing with was our CEO recruitment initiative and the collective bargaining with uh, public, uh, the public, the uh, QP local that we have here. So, um, that's sort of glory we'll report on those. Um, yesterday, I had a meeting uh, with uh, Staff Sergeant Campbell. Let uh, the chair of that committee uh, report from there. Um, that's basically all I have, and we have a transportation and environment health services uh, committee meeting uh, scheduled for December 11th uh, to talk about uh, um, garbage initiatives and where that program is going. So. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Tony had a busy couple of weeks. Um, many meetings uh, we had one with the addictions foundation in regards to crystal meth uh, protective services meeting as well with myself uh, uh, councillor morio and councillor white um, then we had the meeting in regards to the uh, provincial budget um, at the westwood inn uh, many chamber meetings as well i do have some questions though for morio and the councillor morio and the transport committee um, we did mention it last time, and I think it was to Derek as well, in regards to snow clearing at the chamber parking lot. And I don't, if I did see and hear an answer, I, I missed it. So just in regards to that, Chamber of Commerce is asking very, very politely, very nicely to possibly have that service by the town of Swan River to assist us with the clearing of the area around the Swan and just the general parking lot. Would be great to have that, that snow cleared before Friday for the tree lighting, but uh, we'll see what that looks like. Um, as well, for Councillor Morio, I have a document that was presented to me from a local ratepayer in regards to weed control. I'm going to give that one to you because that's all for you. There you go, my friend. Um, and then, just in regards to um, sidewalk clearing. Um, do we have, I know that we have the brush for sidewalks. What does that look like in terms of, I know that we go over and we clear the sidewalks and I like to think we do a, a, a very decent job at it, but there's some areas where it might be older sidewalks that are narrower than the equipment that we're using. What, is, what does that look like? Do we always use the blower? Do we use the brush? Do we sand sidewalks? What is that process, I guess? We always use the blower, and they purposely stay above the sidewalk. It is on purpose to make sure there's snow so there's traction. If you if we try and scrape it, it turns into ice always. And then we do have a sander that goes on the back. It is very, very slow, but uh, we to avoid running that twice, uh, we blow it once. And if anyone wants for the cleaning, they grab a shovel. That's fair. Um, and then it, the other one is in regards to um, the question for the garbage truck and for recycling. And I know that we talked about that at the last council meeting. Can you just kind of update me with that? I know, and the reason I ask is today um, my recycling boxes were getting picked up, and there's 300 boxes being picked up in the back of a half ton. So, yeah, that. That will definitely be covered in detail in the upcoming transportation and, and environmental health committee meeting, but just to overview the whole situation for council, uh, our recycling collection is done, it's contracted out to the Swan Valley Lions, so we don't, <coughs> we don't have, say, a, a solid agreement with them. It's, it's pretty loose, they know what they need to do, we know what we're paying for. Uh, every dollar so it's uh, in terms of uh, performance it's kind of hard to evaluate but they they do use our truck at no cost uh, to pick up the recycling and as I've stated our, our both of our trucks were down two weeks ago one is still down so we need ours because town is a priority it is our truck so we use it when the other one's broken down and they they do have the option of using a blue trailer that the town owns, but due to employee refusal, I guess, due to safety reasons, uh, they are using a half ton if they want to 
purchase a truck, they can. If they, want, they can solve the problem however they need to. But uh, recycling collection when our trucks are down definitely uh, takes a hit. Okay. We're looking. We're looking at initiatives, and uh, I guess the engineering department has. We proposed, you know, in the past, councils looked at all kinds of options to try and, I guess, go to go into the future, change what we're doing, become more efficient, become definitely more consistent on our recycling collection. And the agreement always was in place that they use our our truck for no charge, and that's just the the agreement that was always set in stone. Or what what does that look like in terms of? Of moving forward because I do think that we're at the stages of, uh, of, of purchasing, we're at that stage of purchasing a new garbage truck, but are we then going to continue this whole whole thing moving forward? What is, uh, or am there, I? There's, there's several proposals on the table. So there's, there's roads that we need to look down and we need to look at the value of each, of each proposal and, and what the repercussions are for the businesses, the residents of the town. And that's basically it, because there's there's potential very large change, there's potential no change, but we, you know, it is what whatever the committee will recommend to council after we go through those details. Okay. Well, Councilor Glory, I guess just to uh, comment on on Councilor Matoma's question, as far as uh, recycling, some of the proposals look are looking at what it looks like if they continue to provide the service that they're doing and some are looking if uh, uh, other third parties are providing the service. So, so we are looking at, at not doing what we've done in the past just because it's been what we've done in the past. Right, and, and in the initial, just to answer the question on the truck agreement, how that came to be is we did have a payment program, an agreement where they would pay for service for that vehicle. We, we you know, we heavily subsidized the the lines and that cost was just getting added on to that subsidy so it was just getting <coughs> the exact amount was just getting charged back to us it was just on paper basically okay and, and then the last bit we're just uh, working hard to um, have meetings in my committee meetings um, and to look at the bylaw on the cannabis as well as our um, economic development committee as well just scheduling conflicts have been a little bit of an issue, but we'll work it out and we'll continue our meetings and, and progress on that front. Okay, Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Morey. Um, as Councillor Morey alluded to, we uh, our general government uh, committee met a couple of times since last meeting, most dealing with the uh, union negotiations, which uh, we're hoping are wrapped up. and. Uh, we're also hoping our uh, search for a new, new trail will be wrapping up shortly, so we we're, we see light at the end of the tunnel on both those. Um, the only other uh, meeting I had last night, I had a library committee meeting. Uh, Judy Schneider from Benito was appointed chairperson, and John Thorpe uh, is vice chair. Um, other than that, just routine business there, but nothing. Uh, too exciting to report, and that's everything. Okay. Councillor White. Well, I had the pleasure of touring uh, our first candidate in the round town. It was interesting to have those questions. Then uh, I went to the same meeting, uh, Councillor Tony went for the Crystal Meth Symposium and related drugs. Uh, a concern, uh, there was a, a suggestion that the possibility of the bad guys in the world were ramping up the production of Crystal Meth and like, such like drugs, making them cheap, making them easier to access. Prior to the legalization of the marijuana, trying to have people be pulled on that path, that scared the heck out of me. Uh, the Community Foundation Dinner was pretty neat in that $450,000 plus or minus donation made by uh, a couple of brothers from the Birch River area. And wouldn't that be wonderful other people in our community who didn't have a specific place to leave their cash, be they farmers or corporate citizens, would give the money to an entity such as the Community Foundation. Uh, remember State Service that came out uh, Wonderful, <coughs> great involvement by our council, lots of us there, and, and the members, and a special service. And I've talked to uh, Mr. Poole, and he's put it on next year's plan to, to make sure we have gravel on, on the parade route. 
It was, uh, it was uh, difficult to say the least. I had, I had two old ladies holding me up. They said I was holding them up. I think it was a ladder. Uh, the provincial budget, I uh, went to a budget meeting, it's, I think it's neat that maybe that your worship you might consider dropping a note to the, uh, the cabinet minister and the other MLAs who came out for coming to Swan River to soliciting our thoughts and uh, that always goes well. Then I also toured the next day or so with the second CEO candidate and completely different men, both have uh, wealths of information to offer. And then I had a meeting with the Swan River Business Consortium, this is the second one I've been to and uh, what they sort of stand for, they, they, uh, they want to do things for the business community, anything to improve the community, safety factors, shared resources, duplicating resources, crime concerns, drug concerns, whatever it is that concerns the community, and they're reaching out to other members, and uh, John, as uh, Councilor Antoni has agreed to go there at wearing two hats, I believe would be fair to say. Thank you for that, sir. Uh, then I met uh, our council, our team, uh, Mr. Mario and uh, Councilor Antoni and Councilor Moore, I met with the uh, a staff sergeant to the itinerant staff sergeant and it was a, an interesting meeting I think very positive and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully having him stay with us and work at length of time and also uh, we have made appointments to meet with the fire chief uh, Mr. Wintoni and Councilor Wintoni and Councilor Morio and I will meet him uh, the 21st who knows some date soon and I've been in two or three phone calls with the Swan Valley Animal Protection League and I think I represent council from the perspective. So you get all the G4 together, let's all sit down at the same table, bring the paper from the vet board, and I'll certainly be there and we'll be there to listen. So uh, they're trying to make that happen. That will probably be in the new year, and that would include all of us again. Then uh, today I had the Safe House meeting, and they're trying to reach out for trying to find funding. They're looking at the private sector uh, to have monies to build their building. On the miscellaneous side, uh, all these drug hearings I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to nudge uh, Mr. Poole to start thinking of, he may have already looked after this, but sharps containers, these things, are, these little needles are being found in places they should, it concerns me where children are, playgrounds, and boy, that scares me. You talk about a tour date, things are sort of slowing down a little now, and take all council that want to on a tour of the entities within the community that you look after, and that would help us. And I remember one of the parcels we got from uh, Ken Kirkpatrick in our preliminary papers on first day, he was going to go over con with council relative to safety issues, some safety thoughts, what, and he would be willing to uh, sit down with us to talk about that. What else do we have there? Uh, Glenn's, uh, uh, Mayor McKenzie's uh, retirement activities slash social. I think we should all put our heads together and try to think of something uh, that we could do there. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Councilor White. <coughs> Councilor Gray. Um, a couple of concerns raised by citizens. One is leaves from Legion Park going into the backyards of people in huge amounts, apparently. I don't know, I, I, I didn't have to feed them, but certainly there were at least a couple of people. You can guess where they were, there were places where I went to pick up signs. So, <laughs> and, Everywhere. And the first time that, that happened was, now that you're Councilor, um, so if, if there's something we can look at in terms of that, I don't know what we can do. Um, anyway, I, I raise it with you. Uh, I'll, it'll probably come back to um, Cost Memorial's committee, which I sit on. The second, two numbers to mention are the people who have complained that we don't have enough sand in front of the post office, that getting in and out of cars and getting across and picking up your mail was hazardous almost as hazardous as walking with Councillor White on Remembrance Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got those complaints in. I'm, I'm guessing you have, because I, I can't bear to go anywhere in town without actually we, getting that complaint. We wanted to send them early in the morning to get in the Perfect. Room. Okay. Um, Recreation Committee, I've gotten all the materials. I've yet to distribute them to my committee members. We've, we've got a wealth of material. We don't, it, it, there's two parts to this. One is we're going to have a recreation committee meeting, probably not before the next council meeting, uh, but we will then be busy for the next several weeks after that. Uh, we have some huge issues, obviously, um, on that committee. Um, we do have a wealth of information, as it turns out, but we don't seem to have a, a great storage capacity or, or uh, transmission capacity within the town. So that's one of the things that we need to look at in terms of our governance committee is, is the process for committees and the process for making sure that information is readily available to committees and that there's a, a transition process because um, while uh, 
um, I am tremendously grateful for Councilor Lori's knowledge and, and information, particularly in the governance. And, and you know, he did a spe spectacular job in, in particular the issue with respect to the uh, bargaining unit. Um, but we shouldn't have to rely on somebody else to remember. We should have a, a digital process where it's easy to just say, you're on this committee, here's your whole package, this is the, the, the history of the minutes, here's the issues that are outstanding. Um, we're developing that for that committee, but that's something we should develop across um, the others. I have one question for you, Mr. Poole, which is, um, it, it arose out of Councillor Wintoni's uh, questions. Do we not have a shrinking fund for each of our capital assets for trucks and, and whatever? I, I assume we did. I thought we did. And so, but it's it's pretty simple. You have a, a block of money and say that's how we've saved up. And if you need to take extra, then you take extra from the next year's budget. Isn't that how it works? We do have an equipment plan. Okay. And equipment reserve, yes. Okay. Which brings me to the last item. And I don't really wish to deal with it here in camera, but there was a, a complaint you got that I want to uh, discuss. I don't know if you want to discuss it here or in I camera. I think we can leave it for camera. Okay, then I will leave it for there. Those were, oh, there is one other thing. Just in terms of Constable, Councillor White's um, comments with respect to the Swan Valley Animal Protection League, uh, I'm wondering if that's not something that we should deal with in intergovernmental um, or intermunicipal affairs. And, and the reason I raise that is that it's the first step. One of the problems we have is that there isn't um, a lot of linkages, and it may be the first step in us explaining how linkages would work more effectively um, in a graphic and, and easily understandable way to the other councillors. I have no problem with that. At the moment, uh, where stands Councillor Gray is that they've asked uh, Sherry and Holly to go back to their committee, and they've asked our, our uh, Ken Cope and his Crunch yeah. some numbers for us, and I say if you could get representation from the other committees, other councils, we may or may not have anybody yet, and we could all sit down. And, and if you're on that committee, I would encourage you to come to that meeting. Okay. If yeah. you want, I'll, I'll invite you. Would you rather? I, would I did something else in addition no, to that? No, no, no that, that's fine. I just think that I like it's, the idea. It's 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 a piece in a larger puzzle for us if we do it right. Otherwise, it's it's ad hoc, and then. You know my thoughts on that. I've already explained in <coughs> loud terms. Okay, very good. Mr. Poole, do you have anything to add? Uh, no, just trying to keep my head above water. But uh, yeah, the office is busy right now, but the clerks are, you know, Susan's gone. They're down to two clerks now, but they're, they seem to be managing. And uh, me and Terry are going through the interview process as we speak. So we're, we're trying to make it fit, pick the best candidate for the position, work it out. Would, uh, uh, since you mentioned it, uh, was there exit interviews done for Susan? No, no, I did not get that done. I apologize. Is that right? That's everything. Okay. Well, for me, uh, so, sorry to follow up on that. Would she be prepared to come back in or to, to speak with you? I, uh, if I ask her, I believe she would. Because I think that would be incredibly useful. So if yeah. you would do that for us, that would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Can you forward the a report from the exit interview to the uh, GGNF committee? Yeah. Thank you. Council White, did you have a question? I was just going to say, uh, asking her to come in as opposed to maybe going over to where she works and sitting for 20 minutes might be a little more comfortable for her. However, I need to do it. Yeah. So, exactly. <laughs> So uh, for me, I guess basically a lot of it has already been covered. Uh, all of, obviously, the government, the finance committee, we've been busy with a lot of things with the CO interviews, which has been a, a great uh, process as far as I'm concerned. And yeah, we potentially have uh, a good person there that I think that might fit, but we'll see how that next uh, phase goes as far as that's concerned. I want to state that also in, in, a, in a discussion, or maybe that was out in the media here in the last week and a half, that for the airport, I think that was we need to state to the public that uh, we we have protocol in place as far as getting our runway clean. We don't have any problems with getting that done. And uh, and we had light flight come in and out, but no that problems at all. So there have been some hiccups there, which uh, as far as uh, some other entities go, but we'll have an investigation for that matter, but it'll be resolved, I'm sure, in the next uh, 
few weeks. Uh, but um, looking ahead, you know, looking forward to the AMF, and we'll be attending next week. We'll have our opportunity to to uh, meet as a group with different uh, uh, ministers, as well as we plan on meeting with the RCMP with local issues that we can solve or hopefully come to some kind of agreements or help us out and uh, and move forward. So we'll look forward to that. So moving on then, uh, 9.1, moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Morial, resolved that the purchasing bylaw, which enacts the town to adhere to procurement of goods and services policy, be read a first time. Discussion. Councillor Morial. Um, I don't know if I missed it or not, but what, has there been a new draft ever been sent out for you to do first reading? The, uh, the process here right now is to get it moving along. So we're not going to have a second reading tonight. We're, we're, we are going to start working on it before the next reading. We will have a draft presented or ready for council. Uh, Go ahead. Um, for, for these bylaws, I, I think that's fine because I think they're critical that we get on with them. Yeah. And so um, I want to just make a couple of comments, if I might. Um, the first is that in the future, obviously a, a draft bylaw, like even the skeleton of it, uh, is important to have for first reading um, as opposed to ephemerally a bylaw. So uh, I think it's important to do that. Um, but I am fully committed, and I think um, it certainly um, it's going to come up in due course in the procedures bylaw. But um, the governance committee talked about this and, and the process that's going forward, as, except for emergent situations, and there'll, there'll certainly be emergent situations, because it will be a first reading. The matter will then get referred to committee, and it won't come back until the committee is satisfied that there's a, a full, complete discussion, which includes posting it on our website so that um, people will know what, what the bylaw is that's being proposed. They'll know when committees are meeting so they can come present. And we will then present from that committee a second reading where there will be a more fulsome debate. Um, and then it would go from there to the committee, but more particularly um, staff for cleaning up based on what comes out of the second reading and then third reading. It should almost never be the case, we've agreed. And, and I think um, other, the other three councillors should discuss this, should know about this. And I think most of them do, because I'm sure we've talked about it with everybody. But um, there should almost never be the case where we have readings of bylaws on successive meetings, that, that there would be enough time so that we get the bylaws right, and then the bylaws become what we act on, rather than us rushing through things. So that is, is our, our goal and um, I'm encouraged by it. It's one of the biggest changes I think that we've um, changed. The other, the, just the other piece is that when we get to the minutes of this, if we can have in resolutions and motions, again, the descriptors of what the resolution bylaw is so that when people read the minutes they don't go, oh good, they passed bylaw 18.0044. And like, what the heck is that? Um, the third thing, um, is and I in tonight's minutes when I adopted I wrote the two things I knew there are two additional things when we do the committee of the whole to discuss and we won't discuss obviously the specific thing but um, CAO um, negotiates with the bargaining unit uh, now there'll be um, there's of course an issue of a harassment complaint and there's the conflict issue that has been uh, referred to that. so those four things but so that people will know why we went into, into um, camera not just that we went into camera Right. I agree. Right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Yes. Carry. I take that all of these are being referred to the governance committee. They are. Moved by Councillor Lintoni, second by Councillor Morial, result that the procedure bylaws being a bylaw to regulate the proceedings and the conduct of council and its committees thereof be read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Deloria, second by Councillor White, resolved that the bylaw, organizational bylaw, which establishes a commanding structure for the municipality, including the deputy head of council, as well as committees and appointments, be read at first time. Discussion? All in favor? All those that's carried. Moved 
Moved by, moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor White, resolved that the accounts is hereby, uh, balls be hereby approved for payment, general accounts from check number 23421 to number 23494 for a total of $388,898.76. Payroll accounts from check number 4342 to number 4348 for a total of $103,606.08. Discussion? Councilor Delorier. Uh, check number 23422, Atkinson Sports Excellent for 316. What would we have bought there? Pucks. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor <laughs> Morio. Um, where did they go here? The world. There we go. Check number. Zero zero two three four five zero World Bank Visa. What's all with that? Two that, three four. It's, oh, it's oh, the visa account. Well, what's oh? Uh, I would have to. I guess I got to look at whose visa it is. I know there's a few hotel rooms that have been charged for. Went down. I would have to. Look. Well, you're doing that one. We can. Uh, Mr. Council Gray has a question. Another question to you, Mr. Mayor, to CAO. Um, I, I want to say how impressed I am with, with these, and particularly Mr. Kinney's um, report. Uh, I am. I've done these in any kind of corporations and boards for you know, 40 years, and and this is. Spectacular! I, I can't speak highly enough about this. The idea that we would have explanations before that, that somebody would say, "Well, what could they worry <laughs> about?" and provide them for us so that we have an absolutely clear comment that that explains it is astounding and fantastic. And you should pass on at least my thanks, and I assume all of the, all the councilors' thanks that this makes this so much easier. So when you read the report, you go, "What would that be?" You just know, "Okay, I'll open." Terry's report, and there he is almost every time. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it surprised us when he first started. Uh, Matt, he, he can read our minds, you know. So, uh, and yeah, he's done a, a very good job with that. So, Councillor Friesen, what did you not have your hand up? No. <laughs> The other addition to that as well, uh, Councillor Gray, is the addition to the payroll uh, right. cost there to that. I thought was very valuable for the members of council to see. Okay, there was the there was the Dominion stamps wedges. Uh, and it, there was no hotels oh, okay. on here. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. There was a a gas receipt from for. Uh, uh, when we sent, this was a while ago, but when we sent uh, an employee down for our ALS testing during the water treatment plant project, these hardware bed bug spray, they're very small items. The biggest one would be the SAS. What bed bug spray for? We had a, a person, or an unclean person, come in here and take 10 on the coach, and we know that uh, they're heavily infested with bed bugs. Good plan. <laughs> <laughs> no sad. Uh, and the, the biggest one is is seven hundred and fifty dollars for the SAS Water and Wastewater Association conference that I was scheduled to go to. I did get my uh, hotel cancelled and refunded, but I could not refund my registration cost of seven hundred and fifty dollars. But with the happenings I, I could not take it. Okay. Good. Thanks. For the questions, all in favor? Opposed? Okay. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White, resolved that Niall Williams' uh, position be changed from casual lifeguard to part-time lifeguard, effective November 20, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Mr. Mayor, just arising from that, because the um, Governance and Finance Committee doesn't have enough work, I, I'm, I'm going to ask, can we develop uh, a hiring and, and, and 
employment policy so that it just seems to me that I have no way of knowing if this is an appropriate thing to do. I, I'm just agreeing because management has agreed. I would be feel much more comfortable if we developed a policy and said this is the process and there's a, there's a process if you think that somebody hasn't followed it and come to council or if there's something that's extraordinary can come to council. But other than that, um, I would rather management take care of that because they actually has council ever voted against? But I, I know Council Friesen will tell us that there was one time when they voted against somebody because they knew. But but that's I, I assume we can develop a process where that information would become available, and that that other than that is a rubber stamp. Because for me, I haven't got a clue. I, I I voted for it because why would I vote against it? Right. Yeah. No, I agree, and I think that that's we can probably look at that and see what the proper protocol as far as if it's. If we are responsible to do that or entitled to do that. But I'm I mean, sure we can even draft up something and send it to the committee yeah. if that's acceptable. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. I know my managers would would love to see that. Exactly. So, I, Councillor Delorier. I guess I just to let Councillor Green know I've added to my <laughs> list of things that will be on our agenda. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Councillor White. And with whatever the committee decides, would they share that with Council before? It's going to be a bylaw. A new bylaw. Somehow, and I agree with you, I don't know 90% of these people, but every once in a while sometimes we can spot an individual who may not be the right person, who the hiring people may not know some of the history. But we have to I, don't know, I don't know how to get involved in that or not involved. Okay. Councilor I, I, I agree with um, uh, Councilor Gray um, in the process of, if we have no idea on, the, on these people, it should be referred to those committees. Um, to make that happen. Um, as far as an employee that may or may not be suitable in our mind, we have hired these people in management to make those decisions. It's not for us to contradict what what has been proposed. I have a lot of empathy for my peer sitting across me. It's certainly not. If, however, there is a snippet of information that the management committee didn't know about, I think they would want to know that hey, there's this dark secret that you're not aware of. But that can that nearly bit us because we did react. It was brought was it was brought to council. There was some information that the management committee knew nothing about, and some of us did. I so I'm not sure what, where the saw off is. I think the I think the committee will look at that yeah. and uh, and we'll uh, bring something forward that maybe will appease everyone. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, we have the 10.3. Uh, um, this has to do with the resolution that was requested to move forward. I'm going to read the resolution, then we can have discussion. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor uh, White. Whereas on September the 28th, 2018, Council passed Resolution 2018-430 to award the well-controlled building contract to Bladeale Con Construction Limited, accepting an alternate bid in the amount of $931,250. And whereas on November the 6th, the Member of Council gave written notice that Resolution 2018-430 would be reconsidered. Therefore, be it resolved that Resolution 2018-430 be reversed, resulting in the award to lay down construction be revoked. Discussion. Councillor Delore. Well, I wish, I also wish 430 had gone the other way, but we've gotten an opinion from from our uh, administration that this could get us a little in, in a little bit of trouble if we if we were to reverse this. So I'm quite torn as to as to uh, as to how this should go. Um, if I may, uh, just to. Just to add to that, I don't know if, like, if you're definitely feeling torn, there's there's the reason, there's the monetary reason in our repercussions that I've given council that that there should be no. It, it's my opinion. We go ahead with what council to feel feels, but I strongly recommend that we defeat this resolution due to the monetary repercussions of of passing this resolution. Council, why? <coughs> no fear. I don't think it's just your opinion. I read the data that came from legal advice 
not yes. just your opinion. And the legal advice was that we don't do that. We do this. Councilor Latoli, I, I, <clears throat> this has been one of one of the resolutions that I've had a lot to to say about, and I want it to be known that the way I, I my perspective on it. We made the decision, or council made the decision, based on uh, hiring a local contractor. And I strongly believe in supporting local contractors. But to the extent that we supported this one, I just want to talk <coughs> a little bit about uh, commerce in the, in the in the terms of that decision of hiring for the, for this local contractor in the in the amount being su substantial. Uh, Yes, we did did agree to that. But if we did agree to otherwise bring an outside contractor in, the spinoff for the community would have been higher, or greater than what we have in terms of hotel rooms, meals, local shopping, local support. The companies would be buying their the gravel locally, the concrete locally. Uh, there's that perspective. The amount of money that that we uh, awarded to the to the local organization it, it astounds me. When we're in a situation where there's no funds for other organizations or other groups that need funding to get off off the ground and, and to be better supports for that, um, and I guess I just want that to be heard. The other side of it, I do support the. The recommendations and the recommendations by our legal counsel um, in, in in what we do and how we proceed with this, um, but I just wanted to be known that I did, did not strongly support the original decision. Councilor Moria, um, I was one of the original uh, counselors that was against this original resolution, um, but that was a decision that was made at the time um, so I, I support the resolution because that's what was made uh, we have a, a, an individual here that has proceeded with um, this project and getting all of the expenses and projects and supplies already for an anticipated start date so there was a, a huge outlay of cash already uh, for this individual um, looking at the legal opinion and stuff like that, he may have rights and recourse that we may have to pay the entire project to him plus another person if we rescind this. So this could be costing us twice as much of what it would be. Um, I agree with what Council with Tony said that if we would have went with this um, originally, the spin-offs of hotels, meals and stuff, that would have been great. But uh, that debate was argued and lost at that meeting. Um, at this point, uh, I'm sticking up for the, the resolution um, that was passed uh, earlier, and uh, I need we need to live by the decision we made. Uh, I don't want to be known as the council that keeps flip-flopping between uh, one resolution or one meeting to the next on major projects, because what's going to happen is that we're going to get known for not picking the lowest bid and then flip-flopping back and forth and then we're going to have nobody bidding or, or no reputable contractors bidding and then we're going to get substandard work by just the only people bidding um, which is going to cost us longer in the long run. So, um, I have one more piece to add in that the original resolution that we would put uh, in the discussion with Mr. Poole that we put, potentially put grant money in jeopardy as well. Um, that worries me as well and I hope that in future, I mean we are developing these policies and these bylaws that will help protect those, protect our interests in those terms. Um, I did have another thing to add I guess about the amount of money that we're looking at in, in those in the terms of of sa saving if we rescind we are opening up ourselves up to the opportunity and just based on the conversation with Morio, Councilor Morio in regards to 
um, per items purchased by this contractor that he has every right to um, either charge us for the full contract or bits and pieces of it. Um, then we go into the into respect of retendering things like that. Um, I'm not sure if, if 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 it will balance out. I guess is what I worry about. And I hope that there's other input on that and what those what that looks like. Okay, Councilor Greg. It was cons it was Councilor Tony and I who raised the issue. We raised it during the campaign. We raised it now. And I have to tell you that was not, the legal opinion that we got was not entirely a surprise to me. The fact is that contract A, contract B is pretty established in law and we were well past what we did. Unfortunately, the administration was way too efficient for us. Um, that doesn't mean we can't try to see if they would renegotiate. They have no reason to and I have no reason to believe they would. Um, and there would be a constant cancellation cost. I believe that that is something we should do because fundamentally the decision made by council on that occasion was flawed. It was flawed both in process and in result. I however expect that every reasonable business person would not walk away from the contract. There would be no reason to. And so what I do want to ensure is that we manage the contract well. We've had several recent instances, recent within the context of the town, not recent within the next last few months, of construction contracts that have gone horribly bad or decisions made with respect to capital projects that have gone not particularly well. And I want to entreat management, that management of this contract is a priority for me, certainly. And that if we have mismanagement of the contract, that is, if there's three years from now we have challenges with this, um, I will find that inexcusable. Secondly, or thirdly, um, did we get a legal opinion or have the contract referred to any legal counsel before they were sub submitted to the contractor or something? We did. Okay. Who, who was the legal counsel? Uh, Taylor and Caffrey. It was the, I can't remember his name, Italian. Okay. So we have every reason to believe that they are lawfully binding and that if there's problems with the with the fact that there, if there isn't a warranty or if there isn't a guarantee or if there's something goes wrong that we'll have legal rights uh, to recover. And if we won't, we'll have legal rights as against Taylor and McCaffrey. Uh, I just want to make sure that's your representation. Yeah, I, I don't have a, like I don't know if you're asking for like a paper that they signed saying that this is, I guess I don't know exactly, the, the contract was given to them to make sure that we weren't open to any, uh, I don't know what you call litigation, or okay. being sued for, for not picking the lowest bidder. Well, I'm, I'm not really worried about that. Right. I am really worried that there is some form of warranty or guarantee or right for us to ensure that the construction is completed in, in a proper way so that we don't have, and, and I'm not, because we have, those are matters we've discussed in camera, I'm not going to discuss the problems, but we have problems in a number of areas where that hasn't been done. And I want to make sure that in this instance, Council actually made sure that our interests are protected in that regard, um, firstly. Um, and then I, the qu second question is, how did we select that Council for that opinion and for the opinion on the contract? Because it's my understanding we have local Council who is our General Council. And I'm wondering why we wouldn't have used that Council for those opinions. Uh, I believe I asked them on the first project we did this on, and they, I guess, I, they, I, they didn't refer me, but I got a second opinion from 
Taylor McCaffrey, and I got, and then this project came up, we did the same thing, and I went back to the same lawyer. Uh, I'm sorry, did we get an opinion from our, our, our local lawyers? No, not the not on the first project this happened. <clears throat> so on neither project. Okay. Which brings me to the last point. And and this is something that, that's going to come up in our committee. Both the committee members will have already seen this. The process that's used in some places in Brandon's is a particular example where there's a balancing of value, that is what, what the skills are of the person, their expertise, and, and the cost, and there's an analysis. And council isn't involved in the process except for extraordinarily high uh, levels. And, but there's a process, and every person goes through the same process, and, and there is no, in that particular case, there is no local um, bit, no, no local um, preference at all. And so, um, the exact point is that if council, if, if when we go to tender our legal services, our accounting services, our anything, every service and good, and again I use Brandon because they use the procurement process for every good and service, everything. Um, and I, I'm given to believe that we had that kind of a process years and some years ago, and we've somehow drifted from it, and it frightens the hell. I mean, I'm trying to. That's why this was so important, not because of the individual decision, because quite candidly. In the scope of things, fifty thousand dollars spread over the next ten years is not something, or twenty years, or thirty years, however long that building lasts, is not that big a deal. But I did want to put on record how I found the process for changing it, and the result unfortunate. I do not think, with respect, Council Morgan, that this discussion, or even if we rescinded the decision would cause us to have any difficulty in getting uh, bidders. In fact, I think quite the contrary. I think if we said we're open for business, we're going to give it to the person based on evaluation, and we're not going to let sentiment, and that's what it was clearly, um, override us, then um, I suspect we will get better bidders, that we will get more bidders, and that they will know that we're going to, because it costs a lot of money put to, get, to put together a bid, and if we choose, to let people expend that and give them no real opportunity to so to be selected, then they will stop selecting. And that's what I fear this particular process did. In any event, having said all of that, and with the two caveats that I've noted with respect to legal opinions, which I hope cover us, I plead that it covers us, um, I will vote against the resolution despite having raised this, not because um, I don't, I think the right original resolution was right, but because the consequent of actually following through on this is greater than the benefit. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All recorded. Recorded. Okay. Question, all in favor? Opposed? It's defeated. Mr. White, what, what was your vote? Both. <laughs> I want this revoked. I'm in favor. You're in favor of it? No, I want it revoked. I want to go back to where we are from the start. Well, then you're defeating this resolution. Yes. Or you're voting against it. Do you want to pass this or I want it? that. that Motion is defeated. That's correct. <laughs> I'm not sure I interpreted what you're saying, but I want to stay with the original thing. Decision. Yes, the original you're voting decision. against this resolution. I'm voting against the resolution. Decision. Yeah. Seven seat. That's true. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Dore, second by Councillor White, resolved that Glenn McKenzie be appointed to the Board of Northwest Regional Library as a citizen appointee of the Town of Swan River. Discussion? All in favor? Carry. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. 
result of the council close this meeting to the public and go into committee. This is uh, to cover uh, the status of our negotiations with the bargaining unit, as well as uh, issues with our, uh, I think some harassment, as well as uh, some uh, CAO. 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 Yeah. And the issue of the conflict. Right. There's some four things. Well spoken. Thank you. All in favor? All in favor. <laughs> Sorry, thank you.